All right, hello everybody, and welcome to. Uh, well, it's it's not a podcast this week. We're actually going to do a. I don't know what would you call it, a video podcast, a vlog. Video, I don't video, know. video, video cast. Yeah, video, <laughs> video cast. I'm not quite sure what it, it is classified as, but it's a bit of video, um, and uh, it's going to show you why SMS is not a good solution for your security needs. So I want to I want to talk about it a little bit here. So I mean, the first thing about SMS, this is what I'm what I'm talking about. There is a, a, a simple messaging uh, service, which is you know your general text messaging that you that you have on your phones, um, not Signal, not WhatsApp, not Messenger, just the general standard text messages that you get given with as part of your contract usually. Um, it's it's not very good. It has no authentication. Um, it, it so so there's no means of actually authenticating when a text message is sent that it has actually been sent from the number that it's being reported to be sent from. And one of the problems with that, as you can probably imagine, is the fact that uh, it can be spoofed. So that's not good. Uh, there also, there's problems as well. Uh, you may be familiar with the uh, SIM jacking where a, a new phone is registered with your number. Uh, this can happen. There's normally a bit of jiggery pokery that needs to go on with a little bit of alternate social engineering sometimes to make that a reality. But if somebody successfully manages to register a new phone with your phone number, they can then use your, if you have SMS or text as your two-factor authentication of choice, they can use that in order to bypass your two-factor authentication. Uh, I, I think one of the big problems with SMS is our tendency to trust it, crazily trust it, bearing in mind it's not authenticated, and trusting it over, for example, email. So, I mean, imagine this particular scenario, right? Imagine if you're familiar with uh, MS Authenticator, uh, for example. Um, you know, they're, they're the apps. So there's a there's a Google one, there's a Microsoft one. I think there's some others as well. And uh, you install these apps, these authenticator apps, and they provide you with a code. And when you go to log in to a, uh, a site or a service, you are requested to uh, pass it the code from your phone. You know, so there's, a, there's different codes for each service or website that you're trying to access you select the right one on the app, uh, on the uh, authenticator app and it gives you a code and you type that code in and you get access to the service so let's imagine that you have that set up perhaps some of you do and then imagine let's say you, let's say let, let's take microsoft as an example right so so let's imagine that you have a ms authenticator set up and you send an sms message from uh, or you or rather you receive an sms message purported to be from Microsoft, reporting that it's coming from Microsoft with a link. And then when you click on that link, it opens a Microsoft looking page asking for an authenticator code. Now this can all be spoofed, right? So a text message to you can be spoofed to make it look like it comes from Microsoft very easily, actually. And we'll, we'll show you how the spoofing works shortly in a minute or two. Um, and then, you, if you then receive a message from Microsoft, it looks like it's from Microsoft and it, ha and it has a link on it and you open the link and it opens up a Microsoft looking page. And this Microsoft looking page says, I don't know, maybe, do you know what? Maybe, maybe the text message says something like, we need to affirm that you are the owner of this phone. Please use Microsoft Authenticator to confirm this. The text message comes from Microsoft. It's got a link on it. You open the link, it opens a, a, a page up that looks like it's from Microsoft asking for the authenticator code, you put the authenticator code in, and actually, truth of the matter is, Microsoft isn't involved in any of this. Somebody's spoofing Microsoft via SMS, and they're spoofing Microsoft website, and they just collect your authenticator code, thank you very much. They can now log into whatever they wanted to, that they were being prevented from logging into because of authenticator. So these are the ways that you can get around it. And this is how SMS, as an insecure system, can help bad guys get around better technologies such as authenticator apps. Okay, so that's a little bit about SMS and about how it can be spoofed. I'm gonna now transfer, I'll just talk you through what we're gonna do first, just so you know what's going on. Right? So uh, what we're gonna do here is um, Neil is going to spoof 
a text message to my uh, to me uh, pretending to be my daughter. So uh, I'm going to get a text message through from my daughter, and that text message is going to lead me to a site. I'm going to go on that site, and some information is going to be gathered about me. And I, I want you to see how that looks. Okay, so I'm going to transfer over to Neil now. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work through this, and uh, we've prayed to the demo god, so hopefully it will work fine. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. And if not, we have the power of editing to help us. We're not doing this live today. That's good. Um, so what we've got here is a little tool that allows us to carry this little hack out. It's a tool called SMS Spoof, uh, originally written by uh, Ryan Aykroyd, who's worked for us in the past and uh, and still does uh, every now and again. Do some consultancy for us. Um, basically, uh, the premise of it is you provide three pieces of data, a target phone number, which in this case is going to be Dave's phone number, uh, the contact to spoof, which is going to be the phone number of his of his daughter. Uh, again, that might sound more tricky to acquire, but um, I'm sure you can imagine there's lots of nefarious ways you can get that information. Um, and you might not be looking to, you know, um, spoof somebody's daughter. You might be looking to spoof the uh, finance director and the technical director or, you know, you've been looking at getting those that information. So this attack does require a little bit of um a bit of work up front, but as you can imagine, a well, a well determined attacker. Uh, that's not going to put them off. Uh, and then finally, we have the text message. A nice simple one here. Hi, Dad. I really want a cat. Can we get this one? And sending a little, a little URL uh, related to cats, cats and things. Com. Fun. Sorry. Uh, and again, that, that that could be anything. At this point, we're just showing you how it could work. But you know, you, you, your your devious brain can think of all the all the nefarious ways that you could you could set this up with different sort of links, different sort of situations and stuff. So we pray to the demo gods. I'm now going to press enter, and fingers crossed, Dave will very shortly receive a text message and. Fingers crossed that has worked. So what we'll do now is I think we'll pass. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Dave can show his. I'll show his camera to see if the text message has come through. OK, so those other messages, as you can see, they came in on uh, Wednesday. Uh, today is Friday. So, you know, you can see how Neil's message actually he spoofed one is that last one. So, so that's Lizzie talking to me there about wanting a cat. And uh, obviously, I told Neil that he wants a cat and that she'd been asking me about it. So he, he knew that. Um, and then again, look, so this other text message we've got down here. Uh, Hi, Dad, I really want a cat. Uh, can we get this one? And I've got a link in there as well. Now, if I didn't know Neil was spoofing that, if I didn't, if I didn't know we were, we were taking part in a demo, you can see, can't you, that how easy it would be for me to fall for that. That's just extremely plausible. It's from my daughter. There's no reason why I wouldn't think that's from my daughter. So I'm going to click on the link. Yeah, we have a cat. It's quite a cute cat. Very, uh, very proud of his photo. Of his painting, even. OK, so do you want to take back control of the screen, Neil? I will. Thank you. Chuck it over here. So if you can now see my screen. Uh, we are using the Grabify logger. So mm, this this demo has kind of two purposes. One, it's showing you the power of SMS spoofing. And um, what it's wanting to do is show some of the cool or quirky things you can do. Now, with Grabify, what Grabify will do, let's refresh the page, is it will attempt to grab a number of pieces of information uh, from the device that makes that request. But if I go on to, to this one specifically, what we can see is a number of pieces of information that it grabbed as sort of Dave, Dave, when Dave pressed the link to go to that site, we redirected him through a third party site, which basically grabbed this information. So we can see uh, we've got Dave's IP address there. Uh, we've actually got his location, so we know he's in Derby. 80% uh, battery, that's quite good for uh, nearly, nearly two o'clock on a Friday. Uh, he's in portrait. Uh, this was cellular, so it's, that is based on his, mo that's his mobile IP address. If Dave had been on Wi-Fi, it would have grabbed his, his home Wi-Fi uh, wi uh, wi IP address and actually the local IP address uh, of where he resides on his local network, which it's given us here, the local IP for, um, I think you're with three, aren't you, Dave? It's given us that. A screen, uh, a screen size and uh, whether it's using a private window or an ad block. Further down, uh, we can find out the host name. We can see it's three. We also find out it's got a Samsung Galaxy S20 5G. 
uh, and gives very specific information of the browser that he was using and the fact he's using Android 10. So we can actually use this information in lots of different ways. Uh, we could use information to maybe do another targeted attack, uh, you know, something to do with 3 and Samsung, uh, based on the operating system, maybe it's really out of date, we could look to maybe do something there. Um, and the idea is, to, you know, just extra information that we can use. Uh, we, we have a good idea that is based in, in Derby as well, we could we could use that to our advantage as well. So there's lots of different pieces we can, we can pull together here to try to um, launch a further attack and, and take this further. Yeah, so I think I think uh, I think the, the the point is there. It's a great tool, obviously, because you could argue, couldn't you, that well, you could have just directed me straight to a malicious website that had a bunch of B folks in there and and done some nasty things that way. But you know, the the idea behind this is you build a profile of a person. So just an idea about how phishing can chain into bigger phishing, um, and also to to let you know how um, SMS as an authentication method sucks. <laughs> 